OK, before we kick off, I'd like to say thank you very much, Stu, for the package you sent me. Absolutely brilliant. There's some wing trims for the front of the Corsa. Spot on, and I'll get that fitted pretty shortly. Right, so it's never too late to turn back. Well, this is the new motto I've put on the, uh, the Corsa. I've been uh, doing a few modifications, and I borrowed this of the uh, the missus who labels things up, and I have a spare roll of sellotape. You've always got to have sellotape, and I've uh, stuck auxiliary reverse around the heated screen button. You're probably wondering what that is all about. I shall tell you in a little while. Okay, so with this, you know it's on the dashboard, everything slides about, and you can imagine if you have something like a solar-powered unit, and you turn a corner, it's going to slide off the dashboard, or that way, slide out of an open window. And I've done this before, I've actually lost them out of a Land Rover. Yeah, boxes. Yeah, it could be nicely fixed there. It could be nicely fixed there. This is an airbag unit which I can't remove, yeah? So I'm looking at the front fascia here, and I'm wondering to myself, what could I lose out of this lot? Could I lose the radio and the shelf? Well, the shelf is quite handy. Okay, well, I always run the heater on the, on the screen. I never tend to turn it on to heat to blow through these vents, so I don't really use these vents. And this thing here, which is a uh, clock, for want of a better word, isn't very useful. So I started playing about with this stuff. Okay, and I removed the vents. Well, in fact, I removed quite a lot here. Oh, I've just got to turn that off. Yeah, I've removed quite a lot because here's some storage area. Here's some storage area. And if I pull this one out as well, yeah, easily come out. They're supposed to be stripped to get this portion off, yeah? Well, what you can do is actually pull this whole lot out, yeah? And then the piece of resistance is removing this. And I've actually got a shelf there. You see that? Is this of any use to the vehicle, or is it any use to me? Because what I have is a shallow cutout here. Okay, this is the, uh, the connector, or the power connector. I've just got to turn the hazards off. Be quiet, hazards. Okay. I mean, it's really filthy just at this point, isn't it? Yeah, it's really filthy at just this point here. Don't really like it, but what it has offered me is a place to to maybe store some things, yeah? I mean, it's a good shelving unit. It's a good shelving unit. Now, all I need to do is put a strap in there to strap some of this stuff down. And I'm laughing, yeah? So this is what I thought I'd do, is actually use this unit as a shelf, yeah? And put this back where it was, and then use this at these two apertures for storage as well. Strip down, yeah? and uh, get rid of what you don't need and keep what you do. At the end of the day, it's your vehicle. You can do what you want with it. I'm just experimenting at the moment and see what I can get away with. And I've got away with getting rid of the clock. I don't need it. It just reminds me when I'm going to work that I might be late. However, put some clips in as well. These screw in nicely to the plastic fascia. There's no wires behind that. And uh, I'll put a torch on there, and this doesn't interfere with the operation of the safety lamp. So, anyway, the main bit of the video here is I got some reverse lamps. Look at this on the back of the Corsa. This is because the main reverse lamps are pants, to be honest with you. You only get one on one side. This is angled so I can see them out of the rear view mirror, and it's directional like this, so I can see where I'm going backwards in the dark. That's what reverse lamps are for. Legally, you can only have two extra auxiliaries on the back of your vehicle, so there you go. So the auxiliary reverse is using the heated rear screen switch to switch the lamps on and off, regardless of whether you have uh, reverse lamps on or not. I have two Durite 10 to 30 volt LED reverse lamps, which are quite cheap. And these are them, okay, they've got soft backs on them, and they're moulded so they're waterproof. They are an IP67, which is described in the uh, sales bump, okay. So, uh, sealed unit, and uh, you have two wires, twin core, black and white. White on commercial vehicles usually means an earth, yeah? 
Okay, so looking at the Georite site, there are tons and tons of lamps, and I like the square. Okay, so we have uh, round as well. If you Land Rover owners like a little bit of a round hard on on this, well, this one's LED IP67, 10 to 30 volts DC. So what is IP about? Uh, it's not impact protection, okay? It's uh, not ingress protection. It's international protection rating, okay? Now you'll see that everywhere, IP67s or IP68s. And I looked up on the internet just to make sure that I uh, knew what was going on. So we have uh, six, which is dust tight, no ingress of dust, complete protection against contact. So, okay, there's no dust going to get in there unless it gets cracked. Second digit on here was a seven, wasn't it? So we'll just go on a bit further. Immersion up to one meter, ingress uh, of water, harmful, blah, 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 basically down to one meter of depth obviously the, the deeper you go the more pressure you get okay so the ip67 is basically pants uh, at the end of the day i'll just get to it protection from total dust ingress and um protected to one meter of depth well actually yeah that will do it's waterproof IP68, on the other hand, is protection for long-term immersion up to a specific pressure, which will be my mobile phone, which is IP68 H2O submersible. And I'm quite surprised, actually, this is a, uh, it's a rugged phone. I've had this, how long have I had this now? A year and a half, second hand. It's been quite good. I would be dubious about the holes in that, but never mind, hey. So I need to put this in some sort of perspective. I've got a rear screen here. And what I want to do is mount some tools onto it, which is impossible to put screws through glass, isn't it? Okay, so I've got an axe as well. Yeah, some tools. Best place to put it, they're not too heavy. And what I'm going to do is uh, cut a board and mount it in there. So that blocks off the screen. That means I don't need the wipers and I don't need the rear heated element on this, do I? Yeah. So I should fit it in here and it should be all good, yeah? Well, there is a loom and it's uh, quite an interesting loom if you like looms, okay? This is the uh, main rear loom. So we have a uh, earth wires in all sorts of colors and then we have a plug, okay? Now this will be to the rear tailgate and you can see there's a heavy earth, well, there should be. That means there's a heavy consumer there. Plus you've got a few extra wires. You've got a heavy black one, um, yellow and black, blue tracer okay and then another brown earth all right there's a few in there well basically that is the uh, rear stop light or tail light uh, wiper motor and of course the heated rear screen i've removed the motor because i don't need it do i so that's less of a consumer but look at the wires for the heated screen okay they're already in there and you will know that this is already switched via relay okay and uh, the wiper motor could be a source of power I mean, I've got three wires there, and there's also going to be a wire for the locking mechanism as well, which I do not use because the fob doesn't work. Okay, so we're going to use this feed, and it will be via this switch, okay, to power auxiliary lights, which don't depend on having the vehicle in reverse. Yeah, so that's quite nice, and it only works on when the ignition is on, okay. Now, the wiper motor for the rear is on this stalk, and unfortunately, okay, it clicks backwards and forwards. That's uh, squirt, and then back that way is squirt for the rear. But what happens is it tends to lend itself to be stuck in the wrong position, so the wiper motors are on. It's a bit loose, okay? So I don't want to use that because I don't want to be driving in the dark with uh, white light to the rear, so I've uh, chosen one thing. So, as always, guys, mechanics, anybody really, okay, first of all, with your multimeter, don't have it on hold. Basically, when you're working on anything and you're checking the voltage, always go to UBAT first, which is uh, your battery voltage, which is 11.83. Yes, it is a little bit drained because I've got consumers on at the moment, okay? So, looking at the rear, we've got it connected with the uh, consumer unit actually... Uh, engaged okay so the relay switched on and i'm getting 10.62 volts which means i've got a voltage drop somewhere either on the positive or the negative it could be a relay a bit of a crappy relay but never mind the uh, maximum voltage drop you really want is 0 uh, 0.3 of a volt 
So I'm going to have to show you a tutorial where we can measure V1 to V4. In the meantime, I'm going to show you just a little bit or an insight how I've fitted these. Now I've decided to fit them uh, in a certain area. I've divided it into three areas, which is straight ahead at the back, um, nearly uh, at an angle, or on the curve on the corner of the tailgate not lower down because the uh, body uh, the frame at the back is there so I've got to fit it about there which will give me a uh, splayed out um, light throw so I've measured it and uh, measured it again before I cut and then marked it okay so I've done it equal distance both sides yeah and also measured the screw threads uh, between centers this is a sealed unit okay so it should be all right. So I'll ram and drill through the bodywork. Now that's it. There's no going back from there. Unfortunately, <laughs> it's just one of those things. You can always put grommets in afterwards if you decide to, that you've made a mistake, but in this case, not. So I've put sellotape uh, over the paintwork so it doesn't fracture it out anywhere, or if the drill happens to slip, it doesn't take the paintwork off. But basically three holes with a six mil drill. Yes, I could pilot it, but I couldn't be bothered. Six mil going slow is all right. Thing is, and I've noticed this with crappy drills, not this particular one, but it does actually damage drills uh, because they slip in the chuck, whereas these do not slip because of the shape of them. So they're gripped in the chuck quite well, which is just as well because if these slip, they, uh, they make a mess, don't they? So yeah, these are actually pretty good. Uh, that was from Audi for about six quid, something like that. And uh, the step drill means that you do stepped holes, and I've taken this out to about 12 mil, which is plenty. It's plenty good enough. And I marked it with black tape as a depth stop, so I don't have to go any further. Now it's just a matter of taking the tape off, taking the burrs off the holes as well with a with a round file, and then pushing the uh, items through the holes. Yeah. Unfortunately, because of the uh, the inaccessibility to one of the uh, bolt holes. Okay, I had to do what manufacturers do, is drill through the frame like so, which is not bad. All I need to do is clean that up and paint it. This means that once I push the wire through and uh, put the lamp unit on, I can then screw it up with a socket, which is good, because otherwise I wouldn't be able to do it. It's just too deep in there. So I did get this uh, rather pretty set of cable ties and heat shrinks and a few connectors from Lidl's or Aldi's or somewhere like that for a few quid. Not that they're very good. You don't get much of a selection here. You get the male terminals and the female terminals, okay? Male terminals like that, blue, which will do the job. It's okay, uh, the female here, so I can join them together. Yeah, easy, male and female. If some people remember, I could use butt splice connectors, but I'm not going to. Uh, there's not really much of a selection in here. Uh, quite a lot of ring terminals, which is good for uh, bolting earths to something, but not for connecting uh, wires together. Yeah. I'd rather use something like this, which is super seals, but super seals are for the outside where you get water ingress in. But I do have some heat shrink here in my uh, um, nice box, which I could heat shrink these terminals in. You can see how I've done them, doubles into singles, yeah, so that's working out quite nicely, yeah. Okay, that's how I've wired it in, that's it. No relays that need to be fitted, however, I do have to be aware of um, shorting out onto the bodywork, so this will actually get uh, insulated, okay. Insulation is the key. So for you professionals, okay, top quality technicians, you want to use sellotape, wouldn't you? Yeah, that is the best stuff. <laughs> of course, I'm laughing about that because basically what you want to use is electrical tape or amalgam tape. And I've used amalgam tape, cable tied them together so uh, they're not going to move anywhere. And I'll tuck them up out of the way so they will not chafe on anything and they won't cause interference with the locking device, which is also in the back there, okay. Not that I'll use the electric motor, however, the mechanical one, there is a rod which uh, opens the jaw, but so we'll uh, we'll tuck all that in and uh, keep that connected just in case we need it later in the future. So there we go, that's it, auxiliary reverse. Yeah, hardly any wiring, and I have a button which has been misappropriated. Pretty good, huh? The problem is, is the bodywork is rounded and uh, we have a flat surface bolted to it, which means I'll have to take them off again at some point and put some silicon on it. Flush fit would have been nice, like these, which is fitted to a combi van that was parked near mine. I couldn't actually get hold of these. 
Unfortunately, his are facing right to the straight away to the rear uh, compared to mine, which are actually angled. So to give you an idea, this is a bollard which I've hit before. I have to admit that I did actually hit that once in my Citroen. And then you've got some wheelie bins here and it gets worse on a Thursday and Friday when everybody's got the wheelie bins out, all of them. But I can see those through the wing mirrors and not the rear view mirror because that is now redundant. So yeah, they're angled in the right direction and it's quite a directional beam. You can see that, okay? Plus also there's the bonus if ever necessary is to trick somebody that is a car coming forward to them which will make them stop you never know when you need it but yeah you can see the light throw there is not bad at all so i'm pretty sure there's going to be somebody saying you bodging bastard well this is redundancy if you can make use of something that you're not going to use again well you've got the wiring the relay the switch and everything all it needs really is just to change the rating on the fuse which will be done shortly but you see the wire and the loom and everything's there without having to drop anything else into this area or spend money buying wires and relays and stuff like that. Okay, so further news, I do now have a fetish for netting, cargo netting, stuff like that. So I, uh, you can get these off the internet, but again, I've been shopping at Lidl's or Aldi or somewhere like that. And this uh, netting, cargo net for trailers, it's nylon, fairly uh, rigid. It doesn't stretch much, but it does um stretch a little bit it's for uh well it's whatever you want it to be and i thought maybe i could use it as a wife catcher or something like that or even if we get to a zombie apocalypse we can net some zombies you know what i mean look at the size of it it's actually quite big yeah it has its uses even if we don't have a zombie apocalypse compared to this cargo net which is fully elastic it's actually elastic's pretty good yeah it's stretchy so there's a resource there as needs be however if you've ever had one of these with these plastic fucking hooks on them they're a pain in the ass now this cost about seven quid off ebay and look as soon as it gets dropped it gets tangled up and it's a real nightmare i'll keep this because it might come in handy at some point but I'd avoid that like the plague. This is much better because even if it comes to it, you can cut these and um, rework them if you like. Uh, if you're good at macrame, for instance, and uh, do something with a bit of netting, yeah? Netting is always handy for something. Now, maybe I could uh, dye this and then use it as a scrim. You know what a scrim is? You remember the soldier's helmets where you'd uh, have a scrim net on the helmet and then put twigs and everything else in it to camouflage it? But I doubt it, there's no need for that. But it might come in handy, maybe if you have to do um, make a shelter or whatever, even catch fucking whales for, on, for God's sake, you know. But what the intention is, is to keep it in the vehicle. Now, this netting here I bought, and it was the wrong size. Yeah, it's small, but it's actually quite handy. It's elasticated as well. And I just put it in the back to see what sort of netting effect we get. Now... I have the net there and I have excess underneath, okay, so this is roughly where it's going to be fitted. I've cable tied it in at the moment, but that partitions the back from the front without losing any visibility, yeah. So it's cable tied in this area and what I'll do is put hooks in it, stretch it across and then not lose the excess. But down at the bottom, I'd like to get a pole so I can roll it up properly and attach it at the top with a pole. Okay, so uh, I was looking for a bit of scrap. Now, believe it or not, Britain, in some places of Britain, it's really embarrassing because people just dump the rubbish outside in alleyways. And yes, this was today. But I happen to clasp eyes on something, which is that long pole there. But I'll just show you, uh, rubbish can always be a resource. There's wood in this bed. There's metal clips on this bed if needs be. However, in a time of peace and abundance, this is the sort of shit you see. People just dump stuff around uh, off for other people to remove, okay? This is a council estate, yeah, so that's the type of people who live there. But this strange-looking lamp, yeah, has got a long pole, and it's actually made of brass and cast aluminium. This pole is actually really good, and I was surprised, yeah. Um, it's an odd thing i've never seen anything like this at all there are some resources in there now if you were scavenging because we did have a shit hit the fan situation 
some of this stuff could be actually really useful. Okay, so I uh, stripped it down to see what was in it. I've got some uh, twinkle. Yeah, twinkle is always good for vehicle wiring, isn't it? And then there's all sorts of tubing, which could be used for spacers. And we have a ball there with loads of holes in it. Yeah, there's two bits to that, which is weird. Yeah, but however, it's just one of those things. I'm going to dump most of this stuff because, I mean, even these, these light sockets, they could come in useful, but it's the, the pipe I wanted or the tube which breaks into three pieces, okay, and it's quite heavy, yeah, I think it's brass, it looks like brass, yeah, so that will work as well, and you can see there's another round bit of fitment, no idea what I could use it for, maybe you could suggest something, but here is a ball joint, yeah, it's really strange, because this is nicely engineered, nicely engineered, it's knurled, obviously you can undo it, and you can see that it's got a swivel there, yeah, and then inside it has a nylon lubricating cup and the ball, yeah. No idea what to use it for, but it could come in as a bulkhead fitting somewhere along the way to run wiring through or piping. But hey, never mind. Anyway, back to netting, back to netting. This one here was a cargo net, tiny little domestic one you can get off eBay for about seven quid, which is stretchy. And uh, yeah, I want to use it on the side, but at the moment what I'm doing to stop this stuff migrating everywhere on the floor is just clipping it down, okay, which uh, I've got plenty of holes all over the bodywork, okay. The aluminium sheet, unfortunately, I've only got one of them, so I can't, uh, yeah, that's it, just one. So I can't make the whole floor of alley, but I will do the back part with aluminium or the front. I'm not decided on it, but basically what I want to do is uh, fit the floor and then use these cleats or these rings for securing so I can use these as cargo rings, yeah? Which means that I can use something like a net to hold things down so the cargo uh, ring will be somewhere out of the way, low down in four corners, okay? So yeah, basically I'm going to, as I said before, is uh, put some tools up here, okay? Just to get them out of the way. This is a good space. Not too much heavy stuff, otherwise it will uh, pull the uh, tailgate down. But there's an axe and a saw, that's all I want. Nicked one off my mum for a little while and then I went and bought one. So this pegboard here is what I'm going to use. Cut it into shape and then fit it where the glass is and use some angled brackets on four corners so it's there. So it's there in this bit and that will cover it, won't it? Yeah. So anyway, let's talk a little bit about tools now in this video. This is quite a long one. Mole grips. These are absolutely fantastic tools for getting you out of trouble and getting you uh, <laughs> going again in some places because these are adjustable and they do grip. They've got an over center lock on the handle. Okay, you can uh, get away with using those sometimes when you don't have tools. You have uh, sets, but you also have long nose ones, which aren't as good because you lose the leverage on the uh, longer part of them, but they act as needle nose pliers when you need them to. Okay, so you can get into recesses sometimes and actually recover things. And I did this the other day. You can grind them down to make them smaller if you want to sacrifice uh, sets of them. The needle nose pliers or the needle nose mole grips also worked as pipe clamps if you put some tubing on the ends of them. That means that you can clamp off a fuel line if you need to, if you're in trouble, or clamp off a brake hose if you're in trouble, yeah. And of course, it's, these are adjustable. Sometimes you can overdo it and uh, damage them. Now, this is an odd one. This one's uh, for turning pipes off, okay. Um, but you can use it for what you want. This area here is where it will grip. And it has a surface area that's bigger than a, a usual mole grip. So they uh, they work out quite well. Get a full set of them. They're adjustable, but don't overstrain them because the screw will get screwed up. You'll break the springs. The uh, pins get worn. So just don't over clamp. They will only do certain things. Don't overstretch them. But they are a good help. Now, another good help, I have to get this off the snap-on van, and I got a huge reduction on this. I was looking for a Gerber or a Leatherman or something like that, and this was about £20, which is good. It's got screwdrivers in it, okay, because I'm a technician, therefore I don't need to um, skin a deer with it. I'm more likely going to skin something that's uh, vehicular, yeah. 
Um, what I always find with pen knives and stuff like that, I get trouble getting these damn things out. But yeah, basically, I think that's a bottle opener or whatever, don't know. Um, but yeah, this has already been on a breakdown with me and I used the pliers and a pair of scissors to get me out of trouble. Yeah, because I didn't have all the tools, so it's pretty good. The knife blade on this, this is a coast um, setup. This is actually quite nice. The blade's really sharp. And this thing here, I was very curious about it, the black portion that's here. I thought, what the hell's this? Is it toothpicks or something? But no, it's not. It's actually batteries because it's got LED on it. Yeah, okay, everything's got LEDs on it, but at the end of the day, yeah, that's a battery storage as far as I'm concerned. And it has a case, which is quite hard. Unfortunately, it hasn't got a popper on it. It's got Velcro, and I hate Velcro now. And these poppers on the belt, if you pull or you get caught with them, they pop off and you lose the tool and uh, the Velcro doesn't help, okay? Now you can mount it this way, horizontally on a belt, which would be a thin leather belt, okay, that would work. But unfortunately, it has the opportunity to slip out of the casing as well. So that's not brilliant, but the tool's okay. Now I've got that 20 quid and that will stay on my belt 24-7. Now here's another combination tool I got given years ago. Okay, it's got a spanner head, it's got an axe head, and it's combination with a few bits and pieces. This was a gift work zone, and I've never used it. I really don't know what to use it for. It's a tiny little hatchet, but it's got a hammerhead on it, yeah, and some screwdrivers, and in there, if you can see that, there's a file as well. Could come in useful at some point. Maybe, I don't know, I've never used it. It's got a belt um, attachment as well, which uh, shows the blade, not very good. I would exchange it for a pair of pruning shears because English gardeners are very dangerous if you know what tools they've got in their shed. Okay, so anyway, that's enough from me. See you next week.